at capture on their home network, and it's, it's relatively straightforward to do that. Uh, I'm concerned that no one's, that not enough people are looking at what is actually phoning home from your phone, right? So what are these applications doing? It's, it's a higher bar to entry. So I think it'd be interesting to continue to watch that space, and not just the applications, but uh, from third parties, but from the actual providers themselves. It'd be interesting to watch. And then things like, like um, you know, next generation watches. The Garmin FR80 uh, automatically transfers data to your PC or Mac, and it's, uh, it monitors your heart rate and, and other things. And you can share it through the Garmin Connect online community. What will watches look like in the future? Of course, there's books. When they're not deleting your copy of 1984, uh, we have to assume that they, they certainly have the technical ability and there's probably the financial incentive uh, from the companies to track what you're reading, when you're reading it, how fast you read, all of that. That's just another input in, into this. Um, online, you could, we could go on and on. We could spend a whole day just discussing online, but I, I've just focused on a couple here. Think about it. eHarmony, people are disclosing enough information about themselves in a survey to find a mate for life, okay? That's to one company. So think about this, what we've covered, the different facets, the different types of things that we are, uh, what we're disclosing. And then what, are these being combined in some way? Clearly social networking. I mean, I, I, I tend to believe that each time, you know, we get a connection from someone else, a little bit of our privacy dies along the way. Particularly, I kind of like thinking about people from high school, I, I you know, or this other part of my life, and then no one knows of that connection until they pop up and, and join a social network. Uh, there's a, a website called um, Hunch, which is looking at the idea of social search personalize the, the internet. And what they do is they ask people to uh, answer questions. And you answer those questions, it'll provide personalized search. So there's this balance between, or this tension between personalization and, uh, this, this tension between personalization and privacy. You, know, you get more personalized service, the more you disclose about yourself, potentially. And, uh, and then the idea of location aware uh, games and other activities. Uh, but there's this, this general theme of finding ways to find the people who are pushing the strollers up and down Caesar's Palace uh, to disclose information about themselves. Finding some fun way. We give them a badge. We make them a mayor. We, do all, we give them another star on their friggin', you know, web, web account or whatever to trade for personal information. And the idea of our, our software is phoning home. It absolutely is. So I would suggest this. I mean, if, if I had an infinite amount of time, I'd spend a year taking all the different types of applications, loading them one at a time, seeing what they're phoning home, uh, because they got to be doing it. Sometimes they ask. Sometimes they have it buried in defaults. And other times, certainly, they're not asking. And these are le legitimate companies. So you also have to thank our government. There's plenty of, line, uh, plenty of photos available of people hanging fire detector or smoke detectors in their homes. So let's take a look at some of the things in your home. And, where, and also think about where this is going. For example, cable boxes. There's experimentation ongoing, and this isn't fielded or anything, but the idea of putting different camera technologies in your cable box to tell if people are in the room, right? So they can tell if that people are watching the advertising or not. It would allow targeted advertising. And again, I'm not going to go into the computer, but just think of it as this uh, multifaceted sensor uh, that you're typing information into that may have cameras hooked up, microphones, fingerprint readers, and, and the like. And it's also a, a facilitator of communications. Ah, this being DEF CON, who has uh, modified a Teddy Ruxpin? Who's tortured a Teddy Ruxpin in their past? We have one. We have a few. Furbies, anyone with a Furby? Yes, a couple, some, sometimes the same people. So, and <laughs> these, are, uh, these are technologies, toys are becoming, are including more and more sensors, right? And are they probably syncing with PCs and are, well, eventually will have wireless connectivity or may already, ha do, uh, may already have wireless connectivity. So what are they collecting? 
what thinking about our games. This is micro, this is Project Natal, now called uh, Connect, uh, Microsoft Connect. Uh, it has a depth, depth sensing camera. It can ID and track body parts, and it's uh, I believe it's on sale in November. Uh, they're talking about it being useful for a home security system. Um, but they say it's just a question of whether it's socially acceptable to do that type of thing, having a, a camera looking in on people. Uh, our appliances, well, let me take a step back. Isn't it a great world we live in if you can sell a refrigerator just by putting a pretty girl next to it? Um, it it's kind of shameless. But... <laughs> Um, so, but the idea of uh, internet toasters, everything is becoming uh, internet aware, will include sensors, you know, food consumption, for example. The idea of geotagging being uh, capabilities being built into cameras, GPS, you know, automatically tagging the, the photos. And more, uh, smart power meters are on the horizon. Automa home automation is on the horizon. And each of these things have the ability, these are sensors, they have the ability to collect information. And this, some, you know, the, some of the older technologies, not so much, but as we move forward, certainly more and more. Uh, I had a question, I was showing this to a friend, he asked about the smart urinal. Um, I, I haven't done too much research on smart urinals, but I, I, I'm, I recall seeing the idea of putting urinalysis technology embedded in a urinal, so if you can tell if your, your troubled youth is using drugs or something like that. Um, and then there's a spoof video that we'll get to later in the talk. Uh, people are wiring up their house plants, saying, thank you for watering me, urgent, please water me. People, best men, have wired up their, the, the bride and groom's honeymoon bed to say, they're on the job, they're, on, uh, they're off the job, action, uh, action concluded. Yes, 12 minutes. <laughs> it gets better. And of course, there are pleasure model robots on the horizon. Uh, these are about $5,000 and available in Japan. I won't ask if anyone owns one. But God knows what they'll be uh, collecting. <laughs> I also think kind of shamelessly, this would be an interesting research topic for someone in the room. Uh, don't know if the National Science Foundation will go for it, but perhaps. Uh, okay, so thinking about, that was our home, that was our person, that was our home. And just, and there's plenty of, now most of these, in, uh, well, th this is uh, the idea of just surveillance cameras in virtually every, you know, small store we go into. The fact that uh, blood samples are taken by children or uh, from babies almost uh, soon after they're born. And then all the, the it, I could have gone on and on about the data being collected in a hospital. Where is that being collected? Obviously there's benefits to that, but is it being protected? Is it being destroyed when appropriate? And that's how, it raises those questions. And then at the gym, we're getting more and more uh, smarter and smarter technologies. Some of you may have, you, know, you can put on a, a belt, a wireless belt around your chest and it'll collect telemetry off the, off the human, you know, the heart rate, that type of thing. And, and you have to think into the future. Where is this going, right? Gunshot detectors instrumenting our neighborhoods or not. And again, I have to thank the United States government for making available pictures of your analysis tests. Uh, but you have to think about other, how, how your life is being sampled. And this is literally a sample in a little plastic bottle. Um, in, in England, they were very big for a while on keystroke logging to make sure their workers were working, although workers tend to ha find a way around such things. Uh, your employer may require a polygraph. Where is, this, you know, where is this going? What are the incentives for the employers? Um, anyone gone to Disney, Disney World, Disneyland, and had to get uh, your thumbprint read? Fingerprints red. At the Super Bowl, they've, and this kind of show, illustrates emerging technologies or showcasing of emerging technologies, the idea of using facial recognition at, in various public forums to, to identify people. Uh, clearly, the, um, 
the various uh, frequent shopper cards for grocery stores. Uh, you get, and it's pretty significant. I mean, you get a pretty significant discount or a penalty if you do not participate. But think about, think of all the things we've looked at already and more and more pieces in our space to operate is becoming more and more constrained, uh, operate privately is becoming more and more constrained. There's incentives, sometimes small, sometimes large, to, to opt into this stuff. And it's emerging from the grocery store, a little plastic tag, to your cell phone being this general purpose, uh, general purpose loyalty card. And it, it says, no one in advertising has been able to figure out how to do one-to-one -one real time marketing. The mobile phone is where that will probably happen. It's the only thing connected and always with you. Think about that. And, and clearly, finance is becoming more and more uh, uh, electronic. Uh, at the same time, sadly, phone, you know, anonymous phone calls are becoming far more and more difficult. And there's been various movements to uh, to limit or, or the or prevent uh, the idea of anonymous purchasing anonymous cell phones, the throwaway cell phones. In our car, and from the from, it seems like every can you how far can you drive in your car? Maybe if you've got a 1965, you know, Mustang or something like that, or a 66 Mustang, you can, you can drive it anonymously until you get the first red light camera, the, the first electronic toll collection. Um, there's license plate readers. There's some great videos of that technology online. There's uh, LoJack, radar and laser uh, sensing, speed sensing, and of course the black box. Where is that going to going, be going? Where are the incentives? It's certainly, there's com insurance companies will give, um, you know, uh, have pilot programs out there to give a discount if someone allows them to, you know, instrument their car and, and to tell if they're a good there's good behavior or not. And of course, travel by air, and the, it's becoming less and less fun. And travel by train. Right? Think about it. How can you get around right now? How can you get from point A to point B without someone knowing about it? Okay, so, so these are countermeasures. Uh, like I said, there isn't a silver bullet in here, but there's some, I think, things that can be used to influence the, the flow of, of the debate, perhaps. Some of these things are illegal, okay? Uh, please talk, talk to a lawyer if you're uncertain and I'm not a lawyer. So the first countermeasure is living in the 19th century. Does, it, does anyone you know, live off the grid? We probably have a few people in the room who more or less live off the grid or attempt to. Oh, and whose house is this? Yeah, that's the Ted Kaczynski's house uh, before he uh, went away. Uh, but that's not entirely, living in the 19th century is not uh, altogether satisfactory. Uh, and living in the 20th century, it's, even if people are trying, I mean, it's, it's a, really we want to be citizens of the 21st century and, and, and have some checks and balances in place. The idea of using paper money and the phone book and our library card is, and paper mail isn't really the right answer either. Uh, but one solution is to disclose that surveillance is taking place. Uh, technologies to detect that sensing is taking place. Uh, and obviously in the, you know, certain communities there's professionals who sweep rooms to detect if sensing is taking place. Uh, community monitoring, collabor uh, collective monitoring of the sensors in their neighborhood. This is the New York City surveillance camera project is another kind of way to provide a little pushback and a little on a transparency on what's going on. And this has to be the best security picture of all time. <laughs> it, if anyone has the original, I mean, you, you'll see this in one out of every t other talk here. It's kind of like the Panopticon, but it's awesome. And I, if anyone has the original high resolution version of this, please sell posters. This is really a keepsake. But the idea of bypassing, which you don't want. Um, anybody work in a Faraday room or have worked in a Faraday room? Yeah. Um, anyone have license plate covers for red light cameras? They make special license plate covers. Do, does anyone know if they work, how well they work? Ah, uh, they don't work? Dang. Okay. Well, they're available online. 
And then there's other technologies, repeat, shielding technologies, RFID blocking wallets, radar camouflaging paint, and the like. And again, none of these are entirely a good fit. Do you want to live your life at a Faraday cage? No. Oh, I heard yes, but they're okay. <laughs> Most people probably don't. Uh, the idea you can jam technologies. This is running water. Uh, the idea of you know the, the white noise helps prevent surveillance. I saw it in a spy movie. But anyway, you could find a faucet of running water online from the main uh, state government.